Hey, investor friends, I'm Michelle Markey and greetings from Omaha. Just kidding. If you've seen any of my videos before, you know that this is where I usually record my YouTube videos, which is definitely not in Omaha, Nebraska. But this past weekend, May the 6th, was Berkshire Hathaway's annual meeting or also known as Shareholder Festival where we saw things like Geico having a stand where we got sweet t-shirts like this that you would see on a postcard kind of font. And it's really commemorative because it also has 2023 on the side of Omaha. So I found that pretty cool. And I just wanna say thank you to everybody who's watched my YouTube videos and said hi to me because many of you said that you found my how to attend Berkshire Hathaway video helpful. So I'm super glad to hear that and grateful that you've watched my videos. And I'm just so happy to have met many of you. And I look forward to staying in touch with some of you because some of you gave me your contact info and added me on LinkedIn or Instagram and feel free to do the same if you didn't get a chance to say hi or if we had to keep running because you may have seen me in the airport and we had to be on the go but maybe you want to get in touch with me and feel free to do that if you want to talk about investing or just say hi I'm totally happy to be in touch with everybody because I feel like it's so wonderful to make more investing friends and inherently I want to help you become a better investor so feel free to reach out to me as usual my Instagram handle up in the corner of a video and today I'm just going to give you a little bit of some highlights of my trip to Berkshire Hathaway this year and I won't go too much into what Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger the greatest of all time investors said at the meeting I'll leave that for another more in-depth video in the near future but for today I just wanted to recap a little bit about what I did and maybe you'll keep some of this in mind in case you want to do the same next year and so what I did was fly in on a Wednesday so this was May 3rd and then I flew home on Monday May 8th and why I did that was because flights are usually a little cheaper the more that you go a little bit more out so if you were to fly on the Thursday or Friday and come back on the Sunday, that's going to be pretty pricey. So in order to avoid the high cost of airlines and lodging, I kind of go a little bit more out and I happen to stay at an Airbnb this time. But the one thing you got to keep in mind is that with a hotel, you're more likely to be able to keep that reservation. Whereas sometimes with Airbnbs or VBROs, the host may sometimes cancel on you, which fortunately didn't happen to me, but you might just want to keep that in mind because some of us may be eager to want to book our next year's Berkshire trip right now. But if you were to do that on some of these non-hotel websites, the only caveat is that sometimes people don't know where they're going to be next year. So you want to keep that in mind in case you're trying to chance it. And I hope you don't run into issues if you were to book your accommodations sooner than later for next year, but just keep that caveat in mind. And so what I did when I came in on the Wednesday was some of my friends and I came in a little bit early and we hung out in Omaha's old market. And it's sort of like this old Western town look to it. It's pretty scenic. I thought it was super cool seeing all those brick buildings again. And this time my friends and I ate at this Mexican restaurant called Trini's and I split a steak fajitas with my friend and it was more than enough for the both of us. So that was even the one portion one because there's also a fajitas for two. So you could easily have great food at a pretty reasonable price. Like between the two of us, each of us paid 10 bucks for just the fajita splitting. So you can see that that's a pretty good deal, especially if you come from more expensive areas like the New York metropolitan area like I do. And so with that, we had some great Mexican and then just hung out in the Omaha area. And then on the next day, Thursday, more friends of mine came into town and we did the usual sightseeing. We checked out Buffett's home that he bought in 1958, I believe, for only $31,500. And you don't want to loiter too long because their security people will be like, get off the grass or get off the driveway because you don't want to block that. So make sure if you take any pictures or videos in front of there that you stay respectful and try to keep it moving. And also we saw... Buffett's childhood home which I hadn't seen last time so I thought that was kind of neat to just do a quick drive by there 
And then we just kind of hung out for the rest of the day. Like my friends and I visited a brewery that we hadn't been to before and we're just playing some card games. And then later that day, we went to Matthew Peterson's barbecue, which was a little bit out in the suburbs, but it was so worth it because I met some really awesome people like Lauren Templeton and got to know Matthew Peterson's family and played cornhole with his daughter. So it was just super cool that we got to do all those things and just have an amazing time. So thank you so much to Matthew Peterson. And also thank you to Andrew for some delicious libations. That was very kind of you to share that with all of us. So thank you for that. And then after Thursday, on Friday morning, I went to the Vitali Katzenelson breakfast. And that was really cool because I hadn't gotten to meet Vitali up close and personal. Like I met him last year, but I didn't get to learn more about him until this year. So that was great. And then also we went to the Guy Spear Value X conference, which was super cool. We got to hear from a lot of great speakers, including Syed Balki, who founded a WordPress plugin, I think called Optin Monster. So he was really cool to learn from, as well as one of my favorites, Monish Pabrai, and a photographer who took Warren Buffett's picture 30 years ago, which is super iconic. And I'm sure he's still getting plenty of lucrative royalties from that. So good for some of those guys and other people who I listened to. And I got to ask a couple of questions during the Value X. So I felt pretty fortunate because I happened to be lucky to sit right next to the mic. And that was fortuitous. And it was a great event that Guy Spear and the Aquamarine team put on. So my kudos to Chantal and David, you guys did an amazing job coordinating that event. And I'm just so thankful for all that you guys do for Aquamarine. And I'm just so fortunate and feel so grateful to be even anywhere nearby Guy Spear and the people in his circle, because I think that he's very kind and giving and that generosity that he spreads, it makes me want to be more giving as well. So that's why I just want to help out as many people as I can, because it's just a you know, put out good karma into the world and you may get it back. And that's not what you're necessarily hoping you get back, but just by virtue of just giving without expecting anything in return, the universe thanks you for it somehow. So that's sort of the overarching theme of a lot of things that Guy Spear and his team seem to do. And I just hope that I might be able to join the Value X in Closter someday, or also some of their TEDx Zurich talk someday. I would love to be part of those things. And then some of the things that happened later on on Friday afternoon was a lot of random stuff. So my friends and I, we went to the Berkshire Bazaar of Bargains and that's a good time to actually get there because the crowds are way less plentiful and they still have some stuff in stock because if you wait too long, some of the most popular items will get sold out like the capitalist carrying card for a dollar that has Buffett and Munger's face on it. And then also, you know, some of the things at Oriental Trading, some of their knickknacks sell out by the Saturday. So if you can, it's definitely a good idea to hit up that Berkshire Bazaar of Bargains on that Friday before and pick up some awesome books that shareholders get a discount from, from the bookworm. And it's got amazing authors like my friend, Adam Mead, and he's just super kind and such a great teacher. So definitely look into his book, The Complete Financial History of Berkshire Hathaway. And also after that, the Berkshire Bazaar of Bargains closed kind of early, I think like five or so. So after that, my friends and I headed over to this Six Degrees happy hour that was hosted by Ruma. And that was super awesome too. I got to meet a lot of great people and someone who saw me at Value X earlier in the morning, he came up to me and then I ended up having such a great conversation with this guy named Lalit. So thank you Lalit for finding me and it, I look forward to continuing our conversation. And also thereafter, my friends and I kind of just kept hanging out and I think some of us ended up grabbing some sushi later. I think we went back to the old market and grabbed some sushi, which was really cheap also. I couldn't believe my eyes at how cheap the sushi was. So even though you think this is the middle of America, you know, might not know how you feel about sushi in the middle of America, but it still was pretty good. So you definitely don't feel like being in a landlocked state is any concern. So after that, we had to go to sleep a little early because 
we got up super early for the Berkshire Hathaway meeting the next morning and some of us got up around five o'clock and even though my friends and I didn't quite make it out until like kind of closer to six, it, we still got lucky in terms of being able to get into the arena and get good seats. And fortunately, it was similar to where I sat last year. And my friend and podcast partner, Sina Lonholt, and I got to sat together. So it was just super amazing getting to watch the Berkshire Hathaway movie, seeing Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger, Ajit Jain, and Greg Abel answer all of our questions and this time I also got a picture with Greg Abel so considering he's going to be the future CEO the successor to Warren Buffett that was pretty cool because I hadn't gotten a picture with him last year so this year I felt fortunate to be able to find him and he was walking around in the Berkshire Bazaar bargain so you might be able to find him there next year if you are on the lookout for him he might be kind of just you know kind of rubbing elbows with the shareholder. So considering he's the future of Berkshire, it was really cool to get to meet him briefly. And then also during another day, I got to meet Li Lu and he's considered the Warren Buffett of China. So I just felt really fortunate to be able to meet Li Lu as well. And then, so the Berkshire meeting happens, the all day question and answer session happened. And during lunchtime, you have about an hour to still run around the Berkshire Bazaar bargain. So I picked up some more stuff. And also this time I was a little bit more prepared with my lunch, but if you wanted to prepay and get a voucher for lunch, there's this box lunch by I think called Justin's Deli that you may, or maybe it's Jason's Deli. You might be able to get your vouchers and have like a box sandwich with some chips and cookie. It's pretty straightforward what you get in that. And there's also concession stand food if you wanted some hot dogs or things like that, or if you wanted to have an ice cream bar, which this year I did not do, but Dairy Queen is still there with their pretty affordable ice cream bars for a dollar or two dollars. So you can't go too wrong with that. And then I got to try out some Justin's boots, which I didn't get to try last year. So that was pretty fun. And they're very friendly over there at those boot manufacturers, if you're interested in cowboy boots. And so getting back into the meeting, that lasted until about, I, I wanna say um, 3.30 or so. And then they had a little pause. And then there was the official Berkshire meeting that lasted until about five something p.m. And after that, my friends and I hit up the Willow Oak Acid Management, a kind of after dinner kind of thing where we listened to a panel of speakers and they provided some food and drinks. So that was all free and really cool too. And then after that, my friends and I went on to the Investors Podcast Network happy hour kind of gathering. It was a little bit later than normal happy hour times, like from 7 to 10 p.m., but that was also a great time. I met a lot of great people, including the wonderful team at TIP. So it was so awesome to meet Sean and Clay and Trey, and also Stig, one of the founders of the Investors Podcast Network, and also We Study Billionaires that I've been listening to for years now. So it was super cool to hang out with that group, and then we kind of headed to sleep because it was pretty late and we were all exhausted after getting up super early on the Saturday. And then on Sunday morning was the Markel brunch. So we got to check that out, have some good breakfast sandwiches. And then later on, my friends and I continued hanging out. We went to the Borsheim shareholder event where it was open bar and also you get some shareholder discounts. So if you're interested in fancy watches or jewelry, you might be able to check out some of that because there are some deals exclusively for shareholders if you're interested in Borsheim's. And then after that, we also just hung out some more at the brewery and we played bridge. So we learned how to play bridge because it's one of Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger's favorite games to play. And even though some of the points can be a little complicated, we made it a little bit more simplified just for the sake of keeping it simple and playing together with a group of us. So that was fun while we kind of just hung out and then we went to one of my favorite steakhouses in the area called The Drover. And even though I'd been to Goretz and The Drover last year, 
I didn't really feel like re-experiencing Gorat, so I personally think the whiskey steaks at the Drover are way better. So nothing against Buffett's favorite steakhouse, Gorat's, but I think the Drover is a favorite local spot. So I don't know if this is going to make them a little bit more popular and make it more competitive to get in there next year, but I think that it's amazing. You can't go too wrong with any Omaha steaks that you might try because you're in Omaha and that's kind of what they're known for. So we did that later on Sunday and then on Monday morning, there was one final event that I think was happening at the Durham Museum, which I didn't get to make it to because CNN and I had to record a podcast, which feel free to check that out because we recap some of our experiences and takeaways from the meeting in that video. But later on, I had to get packing and check out of the Airbnb and get to the airport and had my sojourn back home. So it was pretty late by the time I got home last night. So forgive if you see any bit of bags under my eyes. I'm a little bit tired from all the traveling, but I feel so pumped because of such an amazing experience and all the wonderful people I met. Like I kind of felt like my Airbnb group and I became like a little family and with Sina there, it was like seeing, you know, my best friend and in investing again, like, I consider us to be kind of like a Buffett and Munger in female millennial version. So it's kind of fun to reunite with her because she lives all the way in Denmark. And it just feels like we pick up right where we left off because we talk all the time, but yet we don't get to see each other very often. Like this is only the second time I'm seeing her in person. So it was super awesome getting to hang out with you again, Sina. I love you very much. And I hope we get to hang out again because I think that we are going to go very far in everything we do. So shout out to you, podcast partner, and also shout out to my Airbnb friends that I do an investing group chat with, Alex, Casey, John, you guys were the best. So thank you so much for going on this journey with me and all the things we did together. And it's definitely a good idea to get a rental car because I think some of the Uber and Lyft rides might be a little pricey with their surcharges. So if you wanna get around, it would behoove you to try to book some of these things a little earlier, like a few months before you end up going to Berkshire if you wanna get around and see a lot of places. So that's some of my experience. I hope that this was helpful for you. and. If you have questions, let me know in the comments and also let me know in the comments what your experience was like. I'd love to hear from you. And if you enjoyed this video or learned something, please like and subscribe. And I hope to see you at Berkshire next year. May the force be with you because next year it's gonna be on May 4th, 2024. So I think that's pretty cool. And I'm kind of secretly thinking of how I might be able to play with that in the future. And we'll see if anything comes of this little bit of fun play of combining a little Star Wars with Berkshire funness. So until next time, 